while. Sometimes we would see some of the late game picks, but I think now Luna has a lot of time to work with here. And, and this is actually surprisingly an evil genius's pick. We've seen Arteezy, we've seen Fear play Luna before. So I'm surprised Moscow 5 pick it up. And it's a better hero, I think, for Blow Your Brain than a CK, <laughs> at least in, in this game. So Hey, he, I mean, he had a good game on that hero. They just didn't, uh, they just got face rolled by uh, by G on the Ember Spirit set up by those two supports. But I, I, I really do, I like the fact that they're kind of going back to heroes that they obviously feel comfortable with here. This, to me, you know, you can go one or two directions as an underdog. I mean, you can try and run a pocket strat. I, 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 I understand that, but I think against an EG who just can really trot any five heroes out there and make a good lineup out of it, I, I think a pocket strat is just not going to work. No, yeah, I agree with you 100%. This is somebody you have to beat on their terms. You have to win, and you have to win big. Against Evil Genius, it's just very difficult. They pick up the Bat Rider as well, which is not necessarily a hero that I see Universe play too much. But he certainly is capable, as he is on almost every offlane hero. Uh, maybe with the exception of Clockwork. And I don't like to give Universe a lot of flack because I think he's one of the best, if not the best offlaner in the world. But his Clockwork, ah, I've seen it before, might need some work. It's and not, it's it's there, not as consistent. That's the thing about Universe is that with, uh, in a lot of other scenarios, offlane players tend to be the highest uh, from game to game on most teams because they'll have games where they can stay in lane they get early level really able to do something and they have other games that they just get shut down it's not their fault it's just it's sort of True. intrinsic to the role the universe is just incredibly consistent and so it, it's notable when you have any hero that he's sort of up and down on like he yeah. can be on clockwork but i've seen him have some right, good clockwork fair. games as well uh I, out of this lineup, though, I, I really do like the Witch Doctor coming out here as a fifth pick. I mean, this uh, the Abaddon and the Witch Doctor, obviously, it's a little bit on the defensive side. And you know what? The funny thing was, when we were talking during the draft about the Alchemist, one of the only roles that I don't see EG run the Alk on is in the one position. And they're going to do that here with fear. They're going to try lane around a farming Alchemist. The universe has been all about the Disney recently. It's literally all he says. He, all he does on Twitter is post pictures of Disney stuff with his teammates photoshopped on. Meanwhile, Zai getting caught out, maybe. Aggro trialing, or maybe they're just being aggressive. Look at Blow Your Brain. He runs out into the middle of the lane. Evil geniuses are like, let's, let's back up here. Yeah. So. They're just going to be they're going to be aggressive. I mean, they were able to create uh, an early first blood in that last game against VP with a rotation into the dire jungle when they're playing on the radiant side. So they're mm -hmm. looking for something a little easy here. And I don't necessarily okay if they if they keep blow your brain down here, it definitely will be a dedicated trial lane, and that's and that's what they're going to do. I don't yeah. mind this. Meanwhile, Zai gets hit up oh. with the arrow. Phonic Shield's gonna go, and he's fine right now. Okay. Meanwhile, Phonic Shield does some damage uh, to King R. Zai takes a bit of a lick, but he will back up. He picks his Tango up and keeps going. I don't know about this tri lane with an Abaddon in it. This, this, this lane's very difficult, although yeah. it is going to be a melee hero against the farming Luna, so maybe Fear won't have the best time. But with Acid Spray and right click damage coming through, and anything else like cask and a photic shield this might be a hard lane they are keeping the luna down here you see a rotation king are actually picked up the invis yeah. room and there is no ward on that middle lane so arteezy has to be very careful they had no ward on the bottom rune spot either they have no idea this is happening but they do see king R. there's the nightmare coming in arrow's gonna connect on very RTZ. good scale as well it looks like they will pick up this first blood pgg taking tower hits but rtz is gonna fall and pgg grabs the kill yes, nicely God. done coming out from moscow five they need to keep that pressure on and Great recognition. A bit late, but. I mean, it was fortunate, obviously, to get the invis rune there on your on your Bane Marana combo. That just all but guarantees a first blood. But uh, great awareness from them to rotate up to mid lane. As you said, it's going to be very hard for them to make the ganks happen bottom. I actually really liked that play uh, by PPD there in the first exchange. He actually held on to the aphotic shield, let the arrow hit Zai, and make just to make sure that he was aphotic out of that long stun. But Fear's going to eat an arrow here too. PPD does have the aphotic. He's going to use it real quick and they can't get anything going. Cask is going to bounce through a couple of times, but only level one not really doing the damage they want it to do. And uh, EG, they're off to a, an okay start. I mean, you look at the CS, it's pretty much going the way of EG. And the problem really, I think, is, is the first blood goes the way of M5. But how much is that going to help them in this game? And you're going to have static lane. It's already level two. And, and again, you will have plug wards pretty soon for Vigas, but is that enough in this lane? 
Well, I mean, the answer is if, if, if they can't do something in this try v try situation, it's not going to help them at all. Yeah. Uh, they, they do have what they need, I think, to pressure fear, even if they can't necessarily make the kills happen. And, and they definitely can do something like this. If Zai is going to roam around here and try and stack in the jungle, uh, the they can make kills not. happen on him. Yeah, that's the thing. Zai's a bit alone now, and, and he did try to stack, but a really nice play from Moscow 5 to rotate over and make sure that he couldn't get that done. So uh, that's actually just another camp not going their way. Nightmare might go, but they have PPD with the Afata Shield. The problem is if they Nightmare PPD, uh, there's a good chance that he probably goes down because they don't have an Afata to help him. He'll just get arrowed, he'll die, unless they are able to stand in front and body block the arrow. Counter ward from Zai, nice play here. He knows that there's the ward. He'll have enough gold for boots now as well, so locations are okay. Arteezy starts static linking some illusions, so even when Vigas is in a good position, he still loses a, a lot of damage or gives away a lot of damage. But. Yeah, this is a this is a very hard lane for a Venomancer, and uh, you know the the theory goes that Veno can kind of play a little passively and CS with his wards. I I, I don't. I don't think you can do that against an Arteezy. I think you have to actively contest Arteezy's farm. Yeah, this is the problem. I mean, RTZ on cooldown is static linking like crazy. And he, oh, he, why not? Why yeah. would you not? Yeah, I mean, I mean the mana that, cost is nothing, so. And and Venno, right? I mean, Venno's only a 450 range hero, right? And he's only yeah. level three. I mean, you should be draining him nonstop right now. And and yes, while it's true that, uh, that Venno can CS with his wards fairly safely here in lane, I mean, what's he going to do until then? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Arte Arteezy already, look at this, look at this, Arteezy already over a first, a full level ahead, and he was the one that gave up the first blood. And he might even just die for this kill on Vigas, he has Plasma Field, he decides against it, but this is a really rough lane, this is like game one in, in the last series for Vigas, he's just yeah. getting shut out, he can't get anything done, and Arteezy is just going to town. It's not, it really is not his fault. It's just a, I, I really, I know the, the theory crafting and the on paper matchup says that uh, Venno is a hero that you that you pick to deal with Razor's lane advantage. I've, I've just always hated it. I think it's playing to not lose, not playing to win. I think if you, uh, the only time I liked it was when Mushi was doing it in MMG well. Columbus. I mean, that's <laughs> Mushi for you though. That's yeah, just... exactly, exactly. I mean, I, th I think it's it's asking a lot of, of the Venomancer to to hold his own even until those wards come online to let him control the lane of his equilibrium. Getting nightmared. Arrow does connect on Fear. Fear actually blocked it. That was a little duration stun. Meanwhile, PPD's running and Blow Your Brain. They're trying to get this kill. And there will be the unstable concoction. They grab it. Zai's still alive. Buddha Restoration. He finally goes down. Leap away from PGG. Unstable's up in five. Miss Coil. He's got seven HP. He's going to eat his way through and try to TP out. He's actually going to make it. What a TP scroll from PGG. Wow, Man. just just to be able I mean obviously it's a kill on your core for an enemy support. You you never want that, but just to be able to make that a one for one trade was was very nice. That yeah. should not have gone uh, even for M five. Should have been so much worse, but it does turn out somewhat okay for M five. Universe of the top lane, we haven't talked much about him. Jeez. Twenty three last hits. This is a, an okay matchup for Nature's Prophet, but you're not gonna stop Universe from farming. It's just not gonna happen. And he continues right. to farm the creep camps, and obviously the treants as well are very important. He's running right at Tron here. He's got a thousand gold in the bank as well. Universe having a heck of a time in this top lane. These 1v1 lanes are just, I mean, we've spent some time talking about the try v try. Obviously, you always are going to when that happens in a match, but these 1v1 lanes, oh, the wheels are just coming off. Oh, no. Fear okay, stuns himself. Okay. Zai walks in, and this is a problem. Tron now TP's in. They want to get involved. Zai looks like he will fall. Fodic Shield's righty, but you had to have great that. rotation from M5. Arrow! Oh, oh yeah! Yeah. PPD, PGG with the beautiful arrow. PPD looks like he's done. Wow. They will grab all three in that tri lane. That's what they needed to get done. They need a lot more of that. And, and they had to have that. I, th this game was going to get out of control extraordinarily quickly had that sequence not occurred. You see the kind of incredible CS lead that Arteezy has earned mid. Uh, Universe's Batrider completely controlling the map against the Nature's Prophet. Uh, that absolutely had to happen uh, or m5 was going to get out of this game quickly yeah and, and that gives them a lot that gave them actually like a thousand gold and right. took away some of the net worth advantages it is pretty early on here but the problem for me is that i don't know how much farm you're actually getting on blow your brain there's going to be a blink soon coming out for a universe and more importantly rtz is getting complete free farming he's got yeah. 40 last hits in six minutes six and a half minutes in the game so yeah that that to me again i think you need 
probably another one of those TPs down from uh, from transit issues profit, if not two. Uh, I really you need to keep putting the pressure down here, or the CS advantage in those one to one v one lanes is just going to eat you alive. Yeah, I mean this is. They, they need to get involved early on. I completely agree with you. PPD getting caught. He does have a Photic Shield, so so much for Venomous Gale. Yeah. That's probably not the hero you want a Venomous Gale, unless you have an arrow to follow up with it. But Yeah, I was a little bit, I, I don't know. I, we had already said enough about EG's draft, but I was a little bit questioning the Venomancer as a, as a fifth pick anyway, just because of the Aphotic Shield. Well, they, they rotate the Venomancer down, and this gives even more free farm for Arteezy. But they're trying to pressure the tower. I like the decision. I just don't know if they're going to be able to it's, get it's this tower fast because enough. of acid spray. If, if you're going to pressure the tower like this, it, you have to be faster. And the fact that the fact that Veno is a little behind in levels, you know, only has the level three wards now. Oh, Arrow boy, he's got to be careful. Fear. Just juice it. Arteezy just might have a 1v1 kill here. Okay, nice Gale. Oh, looks like uh, Vigas might get out. Plasma Field, not enough damage, but now Vigas has to back away and maybe even head home. And that's just RTZ going to work. The Gale does hit, so RTZ can't continue to chase. Waiting for Bot Ruin. He will find a bouncy, making sure it doesn't get denied. He'll kill the Creep or the, the Plague Ward real quick. And Top Ruin, it is going to be Vigas not picking it up, actually. It was, uh, Universe picked up the Regen Rune, and he pops it. He also has his Blink Dagger, and that's oh, before eight minutes. It. Firefly, Just forget it. This Tron is ridiculous. Is dead. Blink, Lasso, Firefly's going. Zai comes in as well. Tron, my friend, you are going to fall. The cast bouncing around. He's done. Easy gank coming up from Universe. The easy early Blink Dagger. How does this guy do it sometimes, yeah. man? I don't know. That's that's universe, man, and it's it's not just that he does that every so often. It, it's just it's haha ha, like clockwork. <laughs> oh Worst right. thing ever. The ha, -ha was the, the best part of that. Exactly. Oh my god. Kill me now. All right. <laughs> yeah. EG well, is is gonna have a hard time uh, losing this game here unless M5 can can really pull some fights out. And and this. Oh. RTZ getting caught out. Looks like the air does connect, taking a long duration stun. Have a Poison shot here. Nova. He is so tanky. Plasma field. And now the Aphotic oh. Shield coming out. Are you kidding? He's going to kill V guys. He's trying to TP out. Miss Coil. Give he me makes a break. it. Now here comes Universe. No last of a PGG, my friend. You have no mana. You have no leap. Flame break. You're back on the low ground. And you're going to fall. That's a nice sprout, but not enough to save him. Universe now looking for three. Tron getting chased down. Sticky and Apom, you are in trouble. No flame break. He won't continue further, but just like that EG catch back up in terms of kills, they're already ahead in terms of net worth. And beautiful. Yeah. And I, to me, EG DK did this very well as well, but they're so good at drafting differently against different opponents. Brain sap, fear, he does have chemical rage on cooldown for 10 seconds. Nightmare taken away. Actually, the trans took it away, unbelievably. Salve up, fear, gonna try to juke this out. They're going too deep. The salve's still going. Chemical rage is up. Unstable concoction. Can he get it off? No, he's about to fall and will. But look at all these heroes so low. Vigas bottling up, but will it be enough? Just barely. He stays alive. Coming through on the bottom lane is gonna be PPD. He's yeah, so but slow. Yeah, Arteezy here. Here comes Plasma Field. TP out from Tron. Curse of Avernus, do they have it? No, they don't need it though. Vigas is gonna fall. And meanwhile, Zai takes the top lane. TP coming in. Zai, Buddha restoration. He stays oh alive. God. Here comes PGG. Universe, no man for a lasso. Sticky Napalm Firefly up as well. PGG, no leap available. That PGG is a about sad to fall. Cat. Oh my goodness. No, oh my bad god. Kitty. Cute. Universe. He gets out of there. He's like, I'm peacing. Goodbye, everybody. Wow. Hey, yep. Halo Mal. Oh my Cat God. just pooped outside the litter box. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, yeah, this is a little bit out of control, but I, I was saying, a PG, what they do, it, it, they, they approach the draft differently depending on the opponent, and it sounds like a small thing, I but I mean, they know they're playing a CAS team. They're probably going to be facing a lot of early aggression. So what do they do? I mean, they they come out and get out of Baden with the second overall pick in their draft, and it's just such a it's such a cock blocking hero. It really is. It's just, I mean, it's just like, hey, listen, we know you have this really strong combo. We don't care. It's not getting off. The Fodic Shield's just going to kill you. There's nothing you can do about it. Lasso Vigas. What a rough game, man. Three deaths, only phase, and some GG branches.
it's getting out of control pretty quickly. 5,000, almost 7,500 net worth lead for Evil Geniuses. Because why the hell not? You know? Just why not? And look, it, it's... It's funny because obviously when you when you watch EG play, there's going to be no shortage of great jukes and good plays overall. But you know this is really all about the draft to me. I agree 100, percent and that's just PPD playing his game, playing his draft. I mean, this guy knows how to pick heroes, and he has some really solid drafts overall. And he just shows another one here. Now that the game is over, but I don't know really any way M5 get back in this unless you get blow blow your brain free farm for the next you know 10 to 15 minutes. But they're not going to be able to get free farm without losing a lot. King R is getting chased down. RTZ has a haste rune. He might even just kill King R. Plasma field is going to go. PGG has no leap. Double kill for RTZ. He literally dives into the three tower. Tron, what are you doing, buddy? I don't know about that. Sprout did come up. I have the storm going. Plasma field up in three seconds. Haste are you doesn't serious? care about are the game. Are you serious? Tron's dead. Uh, he does oh get the kill. My God. He got trying to TP out. You're not making a triple kill for Artor. Oh, it's 1240, and RTZ just got a triple kill in the shadow of the tier three towers. Are you kidding me? Oh, I mean, this is just. And, I, and Fear picks up a Midas, because why the hell not? I mean, now he's going to be fine. Why wouldn't but, you, man? I mean, you could just pick up, like, a, a BKB, and this game would be over, or something. Anything to just fight early on, and this game's probably over. But I, I guess the Midas is fine, so you have Greebles Greed, you're going to get enough farm anyways, but... This, well, is this is Fear saying I could build whatever the hell I want <laughs> shut up casters. I mean, I'm true. fine with that. I mean, listen, I've seen him build Midas and Battle Fury on, like, not only that hero, but this is what as well. And he might just do it. Knowing Fear, he might go back to the Battle Fury Midas on the uh, the Alchemist. And, well, Blink Lasso. But there oh, is nice. going to be a Fiends group. They might get this kill on Uterus. This is a big, big bounty if they can pick it up. But he is no Firefly. He oh, actually is going to fall. Tron gets the kill. And uh, it's 419 gold plus a little bit of bounty gold going the way of Tron plus a lot of experience. Yeah, and boy, your brain thinking about it here on the tail end of that Moonlight Shadow, but boy, oh boy, this would be that it would be a risky engagement. RTZ is going for an Aghanim Scepter. In fact, has it once he gets his point booster, which, by the way, is, is Get done out of just, 14 just, minutes. Just go away. Are you serious? <laughs> anyway, RTZ I'm going to stop saying that because it's getting old already. But yeah, 14 minute Aghanim Scepter. Triple kill at 1230 under the tier threes. RTZ, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, this guy's. This guy's pretty impressive. If you haven't, if you haven't known about it already, this guy knows how to play some Dota. Um, yeah. But that's just a favorable matchup for a mid that he just decimates. And for M5, there's there's not much on the map that they can do to deal with him now. No, I, I mean, yeah, even if you get farm on Blow Your Brain, you're just gonna get static linked and brought down. No. And if Artisan gets a BKB, there's absolutely no way you're killing him. He's already too tanky as it is. So no, I, I was wondering a little bit because I, I was one of those around the time of TI4. I, I mean, Arteezy had a good tournament, but I, I wondered allowed at TI4 whether Arteezy was maybe the third best player on his own team but if you look at his numbers recently I mean he's right back there he's 575 GPM in September that's like by far the highest of any pro player and I mean there are plenty of other teams out there that are winning so it, it's not like it's just that EG has this big win percentage and that's why RTZ is leading in that category mm -hmm. uh, he really is back to playing the the dominant Dota that EG put has played at their absolute peak and i just i don't know like i said there's a reason that they play the games you know their games are not played on paper but just in terms of breaking down the matchups i i don't know that there's a team in the world that i would give the advantage to over eg right now i mean eg is just playing so solidly and obviously there are a couple of lands coming up that will determine who really is the best but oh yeah for, for now eg is probably playing the best dota and the thing is, I'm going to be a bit of a hipster here, and, and most American Dota, well, hold that thought, is PGG's going to yeah, get PGG's last. PGG's probably going to go down again. <laughs> There's oh. Leave good, oh. but he's actually Yeah, dead. sorry. No. Damn, go, go be a hipster, Mott, because I think I know what you're going to say here. Well, I, or, well, I, well RTZ is getting Oh, games. no. <laughs> I can't even get this point across. They're going to eclipse him. That's a lot of gold. Make a kill yeah, streak. A 497 big. gold plus a bit of bouncy gold going the way of King R. He's up to 1600 gold all of a sudden. So they get 1300 gold out of that 2300 experience. Anyways, in North American Dota, people have known Arteezy has been a damn good player for some time. Uh, way back before he was even on a team. Before KP, before Evil Geniuses. He played on a team called Grass, though. There was another team he played before that, which Grant Grant will, will talk about quite often, but... Uh, this guy, you look at him and, and his playing uh, in in-house leagues in C9DL and NEL and IXDL before he became a part of EG. And uh, everyone in North America knew this guy was good. 
You yeah. Know, and I got to cast him when he played with some other small teams like Grats, though. And it's exciting to see where he is now. Again, you know, they're up against, you know, who would have thought that Arteezy, you know, back in 2011 goes up some of the legends like Vigas, for example, uh, and some pro Dota games and gets to TI and plays, and, you know, gets third place. So uh, That's why I have been a, a fan of NEL for a very long time, and I know you've done a lot of casting for them. And, I, you know, uh, Mike had a post a while back uh, with Spitwad about the importance of, of in-house leagues and, and their role yeah. in the health. I, I just couldn't agree more with that. Uh, these, you know, you got to have some kind of developmental system. You know, Universe yeah. probably going to get another kill here. Yeah, Tron getting brought down. He's got last spawn on him right now. The cask is going to bounce through, and Tron, although he's working, which is pretty solid considering how this game has gone, as he met, he has no items. And, and that's really all they've got is just Treads Orchid. I mean, you have some heroes getting decent. The Luna's starting to get up there right now. Blow your brain with the drum finished up, but he's got to get towards the BKB. Arrow! Universe is just standing still! He's caught out PB, looking for the Aphotic Shield. Might throw it in just a moment here. And I don't know if they get this kill. Nightmare trying to go on PB. They know such luck. All the meanwhile, Top is getting pressure from EG. And... But how many Moscow times have Fiverr. we seen that already? I mean, the, the, the yeah. Arrow, the Gale, oh, it's just... Tough. Yeah, I, you know, you feel like you say this so many times in EG games, but it, it's just Abaddon, Abaddon is like a hard counter. Yeah, uh, here's Arteezy is go probably going to go down again. No, this time, Zion position. Yeah, they're going to TP in. Bots up for Universe down. Nature's Rep doing a heck of a lot of damage here. Arteezy's Eye of the Storm blowing up Tron. And the Static Link as well. Zai trying to get the kill. Looks like he will. They'll turn back their attention on Blow Your Brain and PGG. Starstorm not getting the kill. Misquill does grab it. Bottle up, Plasma Field, King R solo, a Phytic Shield, Arteezy, it's his turn to dive, and he will go for the kill, King R, Brain Sap, not enough Are damage. serious? Uh, Miscoil and Ur are doing some serious work for Evil Genius as they take three kills in a fight that Moscow 5 should have backed away from as soon as they lost their first hero. EG takes yet another fight. So, this is where I... I, I confess what all of you already knew that I'm just a ridiculous nerd and there's probably something wrong with me but I love watching Arteezy on on tanky heroes like Razor and like Dragonite because he has just such a good awareness of, of how to position himself in these engagements where he's eating a lot of damage but he's just short of getting killed it's like he has you know those little rings on the map when you mouse over a skill yes. that show the range yes. of that skill like the way I picture Arteezy playing is that he can see all of those rings for every for every hero in the game on his screen at the same time. Yes. That's how I see him playing in these fights. He's continuously just going forward and backward, just putting himself barely out of range of certain skills, and it's really kind of neat to watch. Yeah, he's got good game sense. And, and we talked a lot about how, and this isn't just necessarily Arteezy, though. We talked a lot about how That's G, true. his supports made a lot of room for him and, and made him a great player. It's the same for Absolutely. evil geniuses. And it's often joked about how Zai will make so much space and, and, and do so much for Arteezy. And it's just like, almost like Zai is just his slave, essentially. That's not necessarily the case, obviously, because Zai is a bit greedy, but the supports do so much work for evil geniuses. For M5, they just don't have that, I think. Although yeah. you have Vigas, and I mean, he's a fantastic player. But this is something that, that M5 can rectify. King Art's a very new player to this team. Before he was on the squad, Nexus was playing for them. And that's not the case for M5 anymore. So they have a new lineup for the most part. And uh, they could still be good, but right now they're getting jumped on. And Vigas is getting caught in again with a lasso. Fear pops the unstable. All of a sudden, he's got a Midas, an armlet, and a Vitality Booster out of nowhere. Blow your brain's about to fall to Eye of the Storm. Eclipse not going to get off. PGG cannot leap up to the high ground, and he'll get blown up as well. PPD with the killing spree, and they're running over this tier 2 tower and the rest of the team of Moscow 5. Yeah, they may go ahead and call this here in the next several minutes. EG closing in on the kind of lead that I'm not sure you can come back from in one of these matches. Uh, they do have the Nature's Prophet, and Tron's not playing a bad game at all, but uh, like you said, the support's just crazy creating an unbelievable amount of space for EG in this match. And King R probably going to go down here. Oh, no. Nice, uh, not, that's really good. Fiend's grip, but I, I, that, that did nothing at all. Yeah. <laughs> Chemical Rage popped. Boom. Back up to full health in the matter of a second. And this is... Uh, Alchemist is, is pretty tanky. He's tough to deal with it. It's less about the right click as a core, but more about the acid spray and unstable right. concoction early on in the game. Then later on, with that armlet, you could just be tanky and even right click down some heroes and do some damage, so... Right, and I really like the fact that Fear going ahead and getting the Midas in this match, but turning around and, and picking up the armlet, a much more traditional mid-game fighting item. Yes. And that was my concern. Like, if you're going to pick up a Midas, I mean, you don't. You could have gotten an item that would have just let you fight and kill 
people early on, but this secures the late game, I think, for EG. Right, right. I mean, Alchemist, a hero that certainly can make a very strong transition into the late game anyway, but with that Midas and Grievel's Greed, you know, without an unbelievable amount of space on the map for uh, Tron's Nature's Profit, I'm not sure that they can keep up. Unstable concoction being brought up by Fear, throws on a PGG who will leap away, but no, yeah, you can't not get away from that, buddy. Yeah, PGG going to get brought down. Miss Coil blowing him up, armlet. And uh, the Gale actually saves PGG's life only to die, maybe to acid spray. He's gonna throw out an air before dying. Oh, come I, on. I don't know about that one, dude. Yeah, I don't know he could have really made it out. It. Boy, that's a little unfortunate. It's just a PGG Marana play right there, I suppose. Roshan is available for the taking. They're gonna counter ward quickly. They want this tier two tower. Meanwhile, RTZ is in the top lane and Blow Your Brain is he's actually just gonna die. Maybe they can't get the lasso off the flame break as well. And actually he does seem to be away smartly. Uh, from the gank of Arteezy after yeah, he stole but, 84 damage, so. I mean, Arteezy just setting up camp here in, in the top left of the map. This is just his area. Arteezy just juke blow your brain like crazy. Oh, now yes. there's a TP coming in from Tron, but Arteezy's like, I, yeah, you're, I can kill you. Orchid, Lasso, Tron is actually dead. Firefly breaks down the tree line. Gene's grip is gonna go, keeping him alive for a moment. The right click from the creep actually gets the kill. Arteezy does fall, however. Big pickup coming up from M5. Moonlight Shadow, arrow sailing through, but not on the target as Universe just walks down to the low ground. Here. and uh, they'll work on this 2-2 tower in the bottom lane for fear. Yeah, I mean, maybe Arteezy getting a little bit out of position there in that top lane. You know, he had been staking his claim to that part, to that area of the map, but he had to know that uh, M5 was going to bring all five heroes up there eventually, or at least yeah. four. Uh, they are going to try and slow the push on the tier two tower bottom with Venomancer's wards, but again, it, it just sort of feels inexorable right now for EG. Look at that gold lead, whoa. Just disgusting at 23 minutes in. And Moscow 5 have been on the receiving end of some really rough games. However, great four step coming out. I believe that was the universe keeping his teammate, his comrade alive. There's the ultimate coming out. They blow up Vigas. They push back everyone else. PGG sitting here at about half health. Oh, you can't and they will that. take down Blow Your Brain. Inadvisably jumping into the fight. Zai with a double kill. And he's looking at it go, man. I mean, Saturday Night Fever, my friend, just giving the Witch Doctor a free double kill. Not sure about that decision making, but again, it, you can't really, in fairness, you can't really evaluate player decisions in a match like this. It's, no. You kind of throw the playbook out the window and, and try and make a couple of plays and fights, but uh, otherwise you probably are going to call GG here after I mean, losing racks. M5 are just trying to throw up some Hail Mary passes here and throw up the surface. Nothing wrong with just, that. It's not working out for them. Guys, yeah. that's, for, for you people that don't watch football it's a, it's a football reference just i know a lot of you aren't americans so figure it out just let you know so but uh fear working on the racks now and, and this is going to be the first set of racks and gg not called yet but for all intents and purposes moscow five there there's one way they get back in this game and i think that's probably a rapier <laughs> i don't even think that's enough so oh yeah i i i'm not sure that uh that a rapier isn't just a donation to the cause at this point yeah, but at the same time, Moscow 5 are going to get some experience out of this game. They want to finish things up, try to get a couple of kills, and maybe even talk about what they can do in the next game. Exactly. That's that's kind of what I hope to see happening here. Oh, as King R is going to get his TP stop. Turns on and grips Universe, but what effect. Nice. Universe looks like all the silver. And, uh, yep. Oh my god, 7 AP. 7 AP for Universe. Wow. Meanwhile, they're running over mid. PGG gets dusted. There's a sentry on the ground as well. Uh, there's going to be the ultimate coming up from Blow Your Brain, but Blow Your Brain gets blown up. Three dead. GG called game one in the books in EG with their first game of the Dota Pit League Season 2. Off to a fast start. 1-0 for them. And uh, really good game. Wow. Solid draft. Amazing play coming out from the American squad. And I, I just imagine if any of the teams or players go into ESL or watching this game, they're probably asking the same question that we are. How do you beat EG? M5 have one more chance to do it, and we'll see in a minute.